In this talk I will show you how to use branches for time travel queries. In Neon we can quickly create a branch not only from the latest state of the database but also from a previous state of the database within range of retained history, which is usually days or week and can be configured in project settings. Uh, let's now explore how we can use such functionality for disaster recovery purposes. Let's imagine we have table users with some amount of rows in it and we decided for some reason to manually delete Alice. And sometime later we discovered that there is only one user left in that table because we had an error in our query. Instead of deleting Alice, we've deleted everybody else except Alice. So now we have to do something about it. And ideally we want to reset a database to the exact point in time where we deleted Alice and then probably manually deal with data diversion afterwards. But we don't know exact time when the wrong query was executed. But we do remember that some amount of time ago, let's say yesterday, database had a proper state and now it is not. And we can write a query that returns true only when database was in a good state and false when it is not. And we also know that like, some amount of time ago it was returning true and now it is not. With such a query we can implement a binary search on the database history, more or less like git bisect does. So here we divided database history in half and now we know that we're landing on the proper state, so we go neat down on this chart. And with such iteration we can quickly converge to the moment in database history right before we deleted Alice. So let's see a live example on how to do binary search in Neon. Um, Let's go to the Neon console and yeah, here it is. Uh, let's go in our project and go to tables. Waiting a bit for project to start should take a few seconds. Okay, now we see that only user Alice is left on the table. So we are in the end state. And in order to run binary search, we also need some starting point for which we are sure the database was in a good state. So let's go and create a branch from past manually. I do remember that on Friday at 4 p.m. that was a rough time when I created and populated the database. Let's call it start branch and let's create a branch for it. Okay, here it is. So let's go now to tables and inspect the content now we still see user Alice on the main branch, but let's look at the start branch. Okay, now we see all the users here. And it would it can already be good enough, but we can can actually converge to exact state when we deleted right before we deleted Alice. Because contents of other tables could be also important and we can change these tables. And there is a possibility that this tables was changed meanwhile. Um, so now we have everything that we need to run a script uh, that implements binary search and let's look at that script bottom to top. So here is a query that we use to distinguish good states from a bad states. Uh, all the binary search is at six lines of code and basically we do iteration and we send a query at LSM function and if, if it is if it is true, then we go, go to the right in terms of history and otherwise we go left. And each time on each iteration, query tells and it creates a branch, it sends a query and then it deletes a branch. And in order to create and delete branch, we use two functions that are calling our API and we use AP key auth for that. And to query a branch, we use ordinary Postgres, Postgres client for Python, PsychoPG2 and yeah, here it is our API key. I created that one in the user settings. It allows me access to the API and to send a query in the database itself. We are using PG password which was giving us, given us uh, when we created this project. So only things that we have to fill here is start and end point. So let's there is, there is a special query in Postgres to, uh, to find out LSM and let me elaborate on this a bit more. 
We actually can do binary search on time, but to avoid dates and timestamps, we can use LSM. And LSM stands for log sequence number, and it's an increment only counter in Postgres, which is incremented anytime something is changed in Postgres. So this LSM acts as a logical time for Postgres, which is only incremented when you're writing something. And actually, it's you can interpret it as the number of bytes written to the database. It's incremented exactly each time you get uh, on the same amount of data that your database is actually writing to the disk. So let's find LSNs of our branches and Postgres has a, a query that can return a LSNs, LSN to you. So here it's, it would be a hexadecimal number. We are interested in the last part for this demonstration. Let's add 0x to show that it's hexadecimal. And on the start branch, the same. Okay, so now we have now we, now we have the way to access our history within the with a basically with numbers. And on that number, we will perform binary search. So let's let's go to the terminal. Let's clean it. And yeah, let's run the script. So script will go and find out the ID of the root branch and it will start creating a branch and for each branch it will send a query and then delete a branch. And we will see that it will fluctuate between false and true for some amount of time until until it will converge. So each iteration takes roughly 5 seconds. And I will stop it here because I actually have a cached version of it and it it was running about not sure how much 20 30 iterations and it converged to exact point. So we can see that here last last digits are 31 and it was false, but on a last digit 30 the, our, our query was true. So we have our users with uh, on that LSM. And that's the last point when we had all, all of users in that table. So that's mostly it. Now we can now we can go and create a branch. And I have just for example purposes I have here branch creation, not with a not with a UI, but with a API using curl and here we are using the same API key to send a query. We are specifying parent LSN and that's mostly it. So let's send it. And here in response, we see that a uh, new created endpoint for us so we can access it with the same login and password. Let's look at it here. Let's update. Okay, so there are some leftovers from my script Let's delete it because I interrupted it before it uh, had the opportunity to delete temporary branch. But we converge to the branch right before deleting Alice. And in that branch, we can see the whole table. Let's look at it here. It is starting. Okay. And now we see that all the users are there and it's a latest possible moment in our database history when that users were there. So we we retained as much of the history and as much changes in other tables as we could uh, to reset to re by resetting that in a in a past. So that's that's mostly it. To to wrap up, we've seen how to use branches in Neon to perform time travel queries for disaster recovery purposes. We learned how to implement binary search on the database history using log sequence number and query to distinguish good states from a bad ones. And the query could be custom, it could be way more complicated if you need. And this, this allows us to quickly find the exact point in time when a mistake was made and reset the database to that point. Thank you for following along with the demonstration. Goodbye.